How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Higarashi When They Cry Chapter 6. We're in a hostage situation. And if you can't tell, Rena is the one that has taken people hostage. Uh, we're here in the classroom of our lovely school that is now filled with uh, gasoline fumes at, at a very dangerous level. Not that, you know, gasoline fumes at any level is really safe, but... Yeah, we're, we're in a really dangerous position right now where Rena could really just blow us all up right now. Like, she can either wait for time to pass and then a kitchen timer will allow everybody to die or she could just flip open her lighter and boom, that's it. So, not really great scenarios to look forward to. The situation overall sucks. Rena has truly lost her mind and I think, um, I think I kind of underestimated how much she has lost her mind. She has gone full on psychopath here. Rena kept hitting Mion, who had her hands tied behind her back. Oh yeah, she's also doing that. Rena wasn't using her fists, but instead the handle of the hatchet. This music is something else. Rena's gaze intimidated me. Her eyes were full of madness. I could feel Rena's emotions boiling over on the inside. If I opposed her, she could or she would easily cut Mion's arm off. Rena hit Mion's face over and over. You know, with her saying that, the police can literally hear it, you know. It wasn't just Mion's hands that were tied behind her. Her neck was also tied to a window frame with a bike lock. So there was no way that Mion could protect her face. I didn't know if her forehead was cut or if her nose was bleeding, but her face was covered in blood. Her blood got on the handle of the hatchet and every time she got hit with it, more blood was smeared on her face. The handle of the hatchet could easily smash her forehead. Because of her position in the Sonozaki family, Mion couldn't say that she hid the bodies, so all she could do was endure. However, Rena continued to attack her. Rena no longer had any restraint. She might even continue until Mion's front teeth were broken. <laughs> ケイチ君、ダメだよ。ケイちゃん。クラスのみんな、今から言う話あったのに聞かないでくれ。少し物騒な話をするかもしれないが、悪いことの話じゃないんだ。だから聞かないでくれ。耳に入っても忘れてく
なのお兄ちゃんそうならなんでそうだって私に話してくれなかったのミオンに話せない理由は想像つくだろうそのだけのいろいろ都合があるんだよそれより気を使ってくれたことをお前が感謝すべきじゃないか I may have said it too aggressively Rena turned around and glared at me そうだよケイチ君そのザキ家の都合でミーちゃんは私を警察に売った仲間の私を売った仲間なのに友達なのに仲良しだったのにひどいよミーちゃん本当に大好きな一番のお友達だったのにどうしてひどいよ This was senseless. Rena cried as if being bullied, but she was the one doing the bullying. Normally, this would be so odd as to be impossible. But I had seen this scene before. I liked you. I trusted you. As I cried, I beat her to death. Rena repeatedly begged me to trust her, and yet I beat her. I know what it's like to be the one doing the beating. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, Rena. Don't you realize what you're doing? You're hurting your friend with your own hands. I understand what you're feeling. I know you're sad because your friend betrayed you, right? But that's a misunderstanding. We didn't betray you. We've been thinking about you all this time. Ah, but she just couldn't see that. Even if she did, Rena probably wouldn't realize she'd made a terrible mistake. But someday, you'll realize. Even an insensitive guy like me realized, so Rena would realize it for sure. And that's when you'll feel even sadder, Rena. You will remember this bloody Mion one day, and then you'll realize that you were the one who made her bloody, and you will regret what you did. But I was the one who could understand that because I remembered. There is no way for Rena to understand or realize that. I wondered if I was suffering the most of all. There is no way to avoid a tragedy. This was exactly the same tragedy with different actors. The main character was Rena instead of me, but it was the same thing. Where was I? I was in the audience now. I knew how this story ended, but I couldn't come up on stage. There's a lot wrong, Rena. I stood up slowly and walked towards Rena, just like what Rena did for me with my arms open. Rena's eyes went cold, and she lifted the hatchet in her right hand. Yeah, you sound perfectly fine. Mion told me with such a bloody face, how could she be? その名でね。She sounded gentle, but her expression was telling me there really would be no hesitation. Rena would crack my head open with the hatchet immediately. But who cares? <laughs> I know. I know you're strong enough to give up your own life for the sake of your friend. It's my turn now. My turn to be strong. Rena 
、俺の命だってくれてやる。だから、やめるんだ仲間を信じてるなら、仲間を傷つけるのをやめるんだその痛みは必ずレナを襲うから、だからやめるんだ誰もレナを脅かしたりなんかしてないみんながレナのためを思ってるそれを疑うな頼むから信じてくれ俺を信じろ俺の頭を砕けば信じられるってんならそのナタを撃ち下ろせばいい俺は防がねえからなち近寄るなそれ以上近づけばライターを点火するよレナ lifted the lighter overhead バカ野郎てめえいつまで夢を見てんだ自分でも分かってんだろ悪い夢だって誰かに冷ましてほしいってだから俺が来た俺が冷ましに来たんだ冷ますのはケイチ君の方だよこの村が奴らに侵略されていることがまだ信じられないのあの時はちゃんと信じてくれたのに Hey, all I'm, all I'm saying is that I've kind of I kind of believe the parasite idea because that actually connected some dots. But、uh, when you throw aliens and other shit in there,、uh, not, not really. So don't, don't say that we believed her entirely back then. <clears throat> Rena opened the lid of the lighter. I could tell her thumb was about to light it. Rena was prepared to die along with everyone else. Rena would die without knowing the truth. She would die believing it was the world that was crazy. She would die cursing everything in this world. That was the storyline of this tragedy, wasn't it? This was a theater from hell. What an interesting script. Who wrote it? A devil? Shit. I won't let this happen. Don't underestimate Keiichi Maibara, the original main character. This is really getting meta. Don't think the same storyline will work again. I'll be taking over the script this time and I am going to destroy it. I won't let this bad ending take place. I am going to destroy their expectations. おとなしく聞きやがれ何を言ってるのかさっぱりだよ、ケイチ君。黙って俺を信じろ。信じてないのはケイチ君の方だよ。どうして私を信じてくれないのやかましい俺はお前が間違ってることを知ってるんだよお前の末路を知っていて、お前がする未来の後悔を全部知ってるんだよ仲間を自らの手で殺し。それがどれほど罪深いことかに気づきもせずに生を終えるそれがどんなに悲しいことかお前にはわからないんだよ全然何を言ってるのかわからない大丈夫なのケイチ君 I think we should be asking you that Rena あ,あそうだな何を言ってるかレナにはわからないだろうなでも話してやるある大バカ野郎の話を聞かせてやるあるところに前原圭一っていう大バカがいたんだそいつはみんなと楽しく過ごす気に何の不満もなかったのにある日を境にほんの少し仲間を疑っちまうんだそして何もかもが疑わしく感じるようになってきて He didn't notice how worried his friends were and he hurt them repeatedly How sorrowful They trusted each other but they couldn't let each other know Can you believe something as stupid as that actually happened? So, I don't know if I was a good one. Hell yeah, we did. You know, people were telling me, like, I don't, I, I don't remember who. I don't remember what the context was. Probably whenever I brought up chapter one as I was going through the other chapters. And I would just talk about how crazy everything was and how. Mion and Rena were the bad guys, along with the rest of the village. And everybody would tell me, like, What are you talking about? Keiichi literally killed his friends. It's like, He did do that. But what did you mean? So, I, I don't know. I wasn't spoiled necessarily, but it's like, Yeah, I get it now. The, the delusion has worn off a bit. 
頭をかばわなかったかばおうとしなかった最後まで俺を信じて両手を差し出したままだったんだそれがどれだけすげえことが俺は気づきもせずおそれがどれだけ罪深いことかお前には想像なんかつかないだろうなだから俺は俺の罪を滅ぼすためにレナを止めるんだそそれ以上近寄ると本当にライターを You dumb bitch, are you even listening? レナが命をかけて俺を救おうとしてくれたように今度は俺がレナを救う俺はレナがどんなに立派な最後を遂げたか今でも覚えてるぜあの瞳には自分が殺されるかもしれないなんて怯えはわずかもなかった These words will reach him, she thought. These next words will make Keiichi kun realize. That was when Rena hit my head with the hatchet. I crumbled down to the floor. She hit me with the handle, but my head was probably cut open. Yeah, especially if there's blood. I felt the blood on my face. それはケイチ君の意志じゃないケイチ君の頭に寄生しているやつらがコントロールしているだけなの今に大石さんが治療する薬を見つけてきてくれるよそうなったら一番最初に飲ませて治療してあげるからねそうしたらもうケイチ君はやつらの支配から逃れられるレナの大好きだったケイチ君に戻れるんだよだからもう少し待っててねこのバカ野郎が I heard a phone ringing in the teacher's office. Rena listened to the phone ring for a while and then realized it was for her. Rena tried to answer the phone in the classroom, but she couldn't figure out how to transfer the call, so she decided to answer it in the teacher's office instead. ちょっと職員室に行ってくるね。その間に誰も逃げちゃ嫌だよ。誰か一人でもいなくなってたら。Rena glared at everyone in the classroom, intimidating them, and then left. That was when I heard a honk. Or, yeah, I heard a honk from the outside. I remembered the signal from earlier. Did Ushi want me to get in touch with. Or, did Ushi san want to get in touch with me? God damn, I can't read. I bent down and put the receiver earphone in my ear. よかった今から言うことをよく聞いてください犯人がまいたガソリンは極めて危険なものです今教室内には気化したガソリンが充満して巨大な爆弾と同じことになっていますですからリュウグーさんを刺激しないようにし間違ってもライターをいじらせないでくださいさっきのような挑発行為は二度と慎むようお願いしますチッ盗聴器って嫌なもんだぜ気化ガソリンはわずかの火花でも着火する可能性がありますですのでこの連絡を最後に盗聴器の電源を切ってくださいこれは万が一に備えてのことですそれから最後に重大な連絡があります犯人は次元発火装置を仕掛けていると予告しています次元何だってキッチンタイマーを流用した次元発火装置で火花を起こすだけの単純なものですが現在リュウグーレナの要求する解毒剤と偽れる睡眠薬を準備中ですですが残された時間が長くありません予告ではタイマーの設定は午後7時 I looked at the wall clock it was 6.45pm holy shit gang we're gonna die in this episode there was only 15 minutes left I could hear Rena screaming into the phone いいえ時間通りです急いでくださいね大石さん一秒たりとも遅れることは許しません聞こえてると思いますがリュウグーレナはタイマーの設定延長には応じないようですあと15分で本気で心中するつもりです I remember thinking the same way as Rena After I killed Rena and Mion I knew the police would come I thought someone would solve the mystery after I was dead If that's what Rena was thinking Then she had been planning to kill herself from the beginning それで俺にどうしろと睡眠薬が毛時期届きます。だが交渉中に爆発したら元も子もありません。あ
あなたに次元発火装置を見つけ出して解除していただきたいのですよく映画で見るような赤と青のコードを切断するやつですかもっと簡単なものでしょう犯人の予告によるならばそれは台所用のキッチンタイマーです電池でなくコンセントに挿して動くタイプの目覚まし時計状のものと思われます教室内のコンセントに何か刺さっていませんか There was one outlet in the back and another at the front of the classroom. I checked, but I didn't see anything that was plugged in. Yeah, you're not in a concert on your own. So, no, but you're not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm This was probably my last chance to stop this tragedy from taking place. She spread the gasoline while I went out to deliver the scrapbooks, so she must have done it in a fairly short time. I really didn't think she had enough time to spread it anywhere, other, anywhere else other than the classroom, excuse me. Then where was the time bomb? <clears throat> ないかありますか特にないあいや一つあるなんでしょう大石の親父に言っといてくれよくも人の古傷をレナに話し上がったなってもし俺が生きてここを出られたらぶん殴ってやるから覚悟しやがれってああ二発殴るぜ俺のこと
、そんな時間はなかったと思いますです。多分、レナは、教室のすぐ近くに隠してあったガソリンを持ってきて、この部屋に巻くくらいだったのですよ。そういや、レナは、昨夜俺と別れるとき、明日の準備があるって言ってた気がするぜ。ってことは何かの仕掛けを夕べのうちにしてあった可能性もあるなそれだけのヒントで私はここに芋虫状態なかなかに意地悪な難易度の爆弾探しゲームでございますわねサトコなら見つけられるサトコに見つけられないなら俺にも無理だろうなだから俺はサトコを信じて全部をかけるぜサトコならできますレナを救うためにも見つけ出してほしいのです仕方ありませんわね本気の私の前にはレナさんのトラップだって問題にもならないことを証明して差し上げてみせましたよさあもう一度聞くぜこの部屋を爆発させるなら次元発火装置をどこに仕掛けるサルコグランドンクローズドアイズとコンセントレートおーマン where is it? I can't end the episode here there's too much going on We gotta figure out where the bomb is, or the timer, or whatever. The timer that's basically making us a big old bomb. Who the fuck? Several cars had arrived, producing several men. They weren't from the Okonomiya station. One of the men was wearing a suit, despite the hot weather. He approached me and pu pushing Kumagaya aside. おやこれはこれはお久しぶりですね県警本部の大高君じゃありませんか言葉を慎みたまえもう君に君と呼ばれる階級ではない何かご用ですかね大高君ガーデン今非常に立て込んでいますまさか県警がこの現場を乗っ取ろうつもりで誰の了解で私が許可したおいしこ所長高杉君から事情は聞いている。君がまいた種だという話も聞いているぞ。Yeah, technically he didn't, you know. Well, yeah, he kind of did. 君はもう下がって、あとは機動隊に任せるんだ。機動隊って大高君、あんたまさか吸収する気ですか危険は重々承知だ。だがもう爆発まで時間がない。君が時間を浪費しすぎたのだ。その尻拭いを。我々がしようと言うんだ。君らは引き継いで、後方に下がりたまえ。I couldn't talk back if both the chief and a guy from the prefectural headquarters gave me an order. お,おいさん、何者すかあいつは。大高くん。ふ<笑>ん昔、麻雀がくっそ弱いくせに生きがってたから。ちょいと叩き潰してやったことがありましたね。You know, maybe not everything needs to be connected to Mahjong. それともあれかな剣道大会で偉そうにしてやがったから、面食らわして失神させたのを根に持ってるのかな Obviously, we didn't get along. 大石君、現在の最新の状況を説明したまえ。あんた、本気で突入する気で、こっちはもうすぐ睡眠薬で穏便に決着がつけられそうなんだ。それをひっくり返す機会もう遅すぎるあと1時間あったらその手も検討できたな突入は府警の専門部隊が担当する君はバックアップに回りたまえ<笑>所長あんた分かってますよねあの教室は今や巨大な爆弾なんですだが一番恐ろしい爆弾は教室じゃない犯人のリュウグーレナ本人なんです我々はようやくそれをなだめ、穏便に解決する手順を踏み、それを実行しようとしています。時間は確かにもう10分もない。でも、必ず成功させてみせます。講習は私が自らやります。ダメなら、私が粉々に吹っ飛んでおしまいです。首相たちは離れてそれを見て、ざまみると思ってればいい。おい、しか、不敬の専門部隊はただの機動隊じゃないぞ。第二機動隊といえば。君ほどの男なら噂くらい聞いてるだろう。In bleach, maybe, yeah, but not here. なんすか、おいさん。第二機動隊って有名なんですか ?5 年くらい前だっけ。空港の飛行機に犯人が立てこもった事件があったでしょう。あれをきっかけに東京と大阪に
ハイジャック専門の特殊部隊が組織されたって噂は聞いてましたがね<笑>実在してましたかででも何だって不敬の機動隊がこんなところにルタカ smiled proudly <笑>たまたま県警機動隊との交流訓練があってね特別に応援を要請したのだよ<笑>相変わらずですね話をすぐ派手にしたがるその癖は The company members exited the vehicles one after another and took position. They didn't move like policemen. Oh, Taka Kun! Ada, Gako de Jugic Sen will be okay. It passed the Daibakas of Gozo. Ansin Stamoe, Totsunu Hanga Skarno, a Kaki Janai, Boat of Chinatio no Gasjuda, Coats Gas de Sairi Gas of Fishsur. None no Monday Monai. Hey. そりゃ便利な水鉄砲があったもんで。Cause you're living in the past, who is she? ところでそのおもちゃは、皇帝を横断して、教室まで届くほど便利なものなんで。それは君が心配することではない。あとは我々に任せて下がりたまえ。As I lifted my arms exaggeratedly, one elbow accidentally touched the car horn, which honked. Of course, I did it on purpose. 今のは前原圭一を呼び出すサインですかねえそうです。前原君が気づいてくれるのに祈るしかない。今さら彼に何を連中は多分、グレネードか何かでガラスをぶち抜いて、ガス弾を教室に打ち込んで、その隙に突入しようってつもりでしょう。連中はリュウグレナを甘く見てる。彼女は本気だ。ガラスの割れる音でも、ライターをためらわず点火する。特殊部隊には制圧できないってことですかできないに決まってるだろうだから今まで慎重にやってきたんじゃないのリュウグーレナは初めから死ぬつもりなんだよ命が惜しくない奴に突入なんて意味がないんだようーん前原さんしかいないおおいさんつながりましたもしもしおいしです聞こえてたら咳払いお願いします<咳>緊急の話があります聞いてくださいどうせ悪い話だろ悔しいですが県警が介入してきてお膳立てをひっくり返すつもりです。特殊部隊が校舎に突入しようとしています。お,おいおい、個人用スプレーで拾わせても、その1秒で点火されちまうってんで、俺はずっと抑えてきたんだぜ。突入なんて、そんなの無理に決まってるだろう。県警はリュウグウさんがすでに死ぬ気であることを理解していません。ライターは脅しで、点火するわけないと鷹をくくっています。多分、5分以内に突入するでしょう。突入する前に何とかリュウグウレナからライターを奪ってくださいそれは次元博士長何とかしろというオーダーに追加でねえそうですマジかよあと5分でレナからライターを奪って次元博士長もどうにかやってくれるぜあなただけが頼りなんです頼みますどうですかサトコ思いつきますですか一階の廊下だけが知りたいんですの。そこにあるか、ないか。レナさんの行動パターンから考えて、一階ならあそこ、二階ならあそこ。一階の廊下をコードが横断してないか、ざっと見ればいいんだな。多分、あるはず。<笑>普段のレナさんなら断言できますけど、今のレナさんはノイズだらけで行動パターンが読み切れませんわ。よし、任せろ。もう悩むにも時間が足りねえよ。最後の二択は、俺が直接探る。I don't want another tragedy. You demons down in hell, I bet you're just waiting for an amusing ending to unfold while eating some popcorn. I won't let that happen. I'm going to change everything. And then I'm going to make you pick up your popcorn off the floor. I spoke to Rena as she continued on with her story about the aliens. Nani? どうしたのケイチ君いや今音が聞こえなかったかおっレナ went quiet and looked around レナ had become totally paranoid about everything once she became worried she couldn't ignore it 本当にケイチ君ああ聞き間違いじゃない<笑> I knew she wanted to check it herself but she really couldn't leave the room for something like that So in that case, she'd have, to have, she'd have to ask me to check for her. 
Rena must have been thinking the same thing. Rena gave me an order with a fake smile on her lips. Rena watched me go out into the hallway. As I did, she spoke to me. After being freed from Rena, I looked for a cord in a hurry. I didn't even have five minutes. The office probably had more outlets than anywhere else. I headed for the teacher's office. Shit, where were the outlets? Unlike light switches, outlets couldn't always be found near entrances. Damn it. Why did the clock in the teacher's office have to make so much or make such a loud ticking noise? レナさんならきっと見つけてくれますのです。レナさんならレナさんならいつものレナさんより疑り深いレナさんならどこにどう仕掛けますの？このレナさんのトラップで最後なんて北条さとこ一生の恥ですわ。なんだこれ？ I saw a plug inserted into the unit under the principal's desk, and I also saw a cord extending under the door to the reception room. There shouldn't have been any reason why a cord would, have, would a cord had to be extended into that room. Excuse me. The reception room had an outlet of of its own. I tiptoed over to the reception room and opened the door. Squeak. The door squeaked as I cracked it open a little. I poked my head inside the reception room. I saw the suspicious cord crossing the room and extending under the door to the hallway. I followed the cord through the reception room, I opened the door to the hallway, and the cord was extending into the storage closet. The storage closet was used to hold cleaning chemicals. I could smell them from here. The cord was extending into there. I carefully opened the door and turned the light on. The cord was attached to another extension cord and there was an alarm clock that didn't belong in there. <laughs> But it wasn't an alarm clock. And we said that out loud for some reason. The time bomb. So all I'd have to do was unplug the cord. But Ren is probably right behind us right now because that's how this works. I picked up the alarm clock. It looked like a normal alarm clock. Actually, it was a normal alarm clock. I remembered Kumagai calling it a kitchen timer. He said it was a bit like an alarm clock. But this wasn't a bit like an alarm clock. It was an alarm clock. Wait, didn't alarm clocks use batteries? This alarm clock was a battery-operated one, too. I looked at the extension cord, and there was nothing plugged into it. Huh? What was this extension cord for? Why was this extending all the way from the teacher's office? A black shadow was covering me. I felt my body freeze. It was so frozen that I felt it was about to crack. I turned around slowly and saw someone holding a hatchet above their head. Uh, uh. I dropped the alarm clock. It made a noise as it hit the ground. All the cells in my body were frozen. This was Rena's trap. Rena was suspicious of everyone, including me. This whole time, she thought there was someone connected to the people outside. This was a trap to lure that person out. Only the people outside knew about the time bomb. I was told about the whole thing, and so I followed the extension cord and picked up the alarm clock. How stupid of me. Ma Mate. Rena. Rena hit me with the back side of the hatchet earlier. It was painful, but it didn't kill me. But this time she was holding the hatchet the right way. It wouldn't just crack my forehead. It would split my entire head open. Rena lifted the hatchet mercilessly. She moved slowly, as if everything was in slow motion. She looked almost divine. Maybe it really was holy. I was praying after all. Praying? What was I praying for? I was praying for my life! 
What the fuck? It was so sudden, I couldn't tell what happened. Rika-chan had jumped onto Rena from behind. I didn't know what kind of weapon Rika-chan used, but Rena started moaning. It clearly hurt. That brought me back to reality. I couldn't just watch them. I had to get the lighter from Rena. <laughs> Rena knew I was after the lighter. She crossed her fingers around it tightly. Rikachan was grabbing onto the arm Rena was holding the hatchet in. I wanted to tell her to run, but thanks to Rikachan, I could use both of my hands to get at the lighter. The lighter flew out of Rena's hand. It hit the hallway wall and dropped down to the floor. I picked it up. At the same moment I did, Rena managed to shake off Rikachan. There's our chance. I turned into I turned in Sudoku's direction. There's another choice. Uh, Sudoku, are you still there? There's no time. Well, Sudoku, you should be able. <laughs> what the fuck are these choices? Sudoku, are you still there? There's no time. Well, Sudoku, you should be able to figure it out. So, we either give up on Sudoku, or we continue to rely on Sudoku. And these are weird. I'm gonna save it in this slot, you know. We'll have the first choice, and then the second choice. I didn't know there were two. Wow, you can fuck up twice. Honestly, I... <laughs> I'd probably choose the first one, I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. Like, these are worded re really weirdly. I heard Sotoko screaming from the classroom. Sotoko had figured out where Rena hid the time bomb. I wanted to catch Rena, but I didn't have time for that. I had to do something about the time bomb instead. Rikachan had spread her arms, blocking Rena's path forward. I didn't know what Rikachan was talking about. But there was one thing I did know. Just like Rena and Mion were ready to give up their lives for their friends, and I was willing to give up mine, Rikachan was prepared for that too. Therefore, telling Rikachan to run was like telling her she wasn't my friend. And so I will depend on my friend Rikachan. <laughs> Leaving it to Rikachan, I dashed for the classroom. As soon as Rika heard Keiichi's footsteps reach the classroom door, she sighed in relief. As she did, Rena's black shadow came e came ever closer. <laughs> Rika grabbed a mop as she ran from the storage closet. She picked it up and held it upside down like a spear. Rika's stance told Rena that she was ready to fight. Rika didn't look like a little girl anymore. She looked so brave. That Rena was even that that Rena was even startled by it. Excuse me. I guess I was startled too. <laughs> Rika smiled cynically. Rika usually never smiled this way. Wait, I thought she only looped like a, like not even ten times. How many fucking times has she gone through this shit? リカちゃんじゃないね。あの夜に出会ったリカちゃん
宇宙人の直系の一族だもんね<笑>脳みそを叩き割って中の寄生虫を引きずり出してやるからね Wow, they, you know, they really exaggerate how much he's laughing, but the fact that they had to put that on a separate line. Rena raised her hatchet and charged at Rika with a scream. <laughs> Rena looked like a beast charging towards its prey. Rika took a step backwards and lowered her body, preparing to counterattack. She did that with no hesitation. <laughs> いっぷんも稼げれば十分なの。遊んであげるわ。おいで。なたおんだ。いいですの、ケイチさん。すべての simple if you just remember. Come on, it's quite obvious when you when you do. Oh, that's right. We had been smelling gasoline coming from outdoors. There were no forestry service people in the office, so they weren't doing any work today. The smell wasn't coming from anything they were doing. In other words, it was the smell of Rena's gasoline. Rena hid the gasoline near the classroom. She had it in a plastic container. You can't smell gasoline that's in a plastic container. So in other words, she had more gasoline ready than just in the container she used to spread it around the classroom. Where was the smell coming from? Was it coming from outside? Vaporized gasoline is heavier than air. It stinks. Or it stinks, sorry. Well, probably both. There was another hint other than that. <laughs> God damn it, I thought these were just normal conversations. Kids who love to play with their ball never lose it. It should have been in the same place as it always was. But it was gone. So that must mean that Rena used it for something. The gasoline was coming from above. A ball was missing. So maybe it was stuffed somewhere. The drain canal extended along the roof of the second floor and then came straight down to the ground. If it was plugged and filled with gasoline, it was like a huge Molotov cocktail that extended from the ground to the roof of the second floor. Furthermore, the drain canal ran by the classroom windows. If the canal exploded, the classroom would explode too. Which means that fucker is up on the second floor. Or that. I picked up a pair of scissors and cut Sitoko's bonds. I rubbed Sitoko's head. As I jumped out the classroom, or out of the classroom, Sotoko stopped me. Something silver sailed through the air. I caught it. It was a metal bat. Oh my god, it's all looping back around. Something we didn't do in chapter 1. The metal bat fit right in my palm, or chapter 3 actually. I didn't even feel its weight. It really eased my mind. The name Satoshi was written on the handle. This was the bat that belonged to Sedoko's brother, Satoshi. He was the victim of last year's tragedy. You and I were the same. I won't let another tragedy take place. I'll treat this as a gift from you, who was waiting in the wings. Let's rip apart the script of this demonic tragedy together. Let's go, Satoshi. As I tried to run up the stairs, I heard a loud noise coming from the hallway by the teacher's office. I saw Rikachan rolling on the floor. Damn, Rikachan! You held out as long as you could. Kusso, 
次はケイチくんだよーややべえとにかく上だ今は屋根の上だ<笑>よく気づいたねよく気づいたね、well, at least that proves it. でもさせるもんかー Rena's face looked unbelievably scary She was ready to rip me apart if she caught me. In that case, just try me. I jumped up the stairs, skipping every other step. I turned on the bug in my pocket. I didn't have time to put, on, put in the earphones. As Rena flew up the stairs, her foot ca got caught on a jump rope. She tripped, and then three buckets fell on her head. The result of Sedako's trap. Yeah. Sedako leaned against the wall and waved her index finger in a mocking gesture. Smash. The fourth bucket hit Sedoko on the head. I continued up the. <laughs> God damn it, everything's really falling apart, isn't it? I continued up to the rooftop. Rena ignored Sedoko and ran after me. Uishi grabbed the pair of binoculars from Kumagai and looked at the rain gutter on the rooftop. There was something like an alarm clock sitting there. The cord from the clock was extending into the second floor window. It was so obvious, but they didn't even notice until just then. Sodoko was working hard to remove her classmates' restraints, but she couldn't do anything about the bike lock on Mion's neck. <laughs> Sedako reached for the back of her collar and produced a bent hairpin. Sedako opened the window, climbed onto the window sill, and faced the bike yeah, faced the bike lock that was restraining Mion. <laughs> みんなは全部のカーテンを開けて窓を全部開けたらヒントマエバラさんはどうするんですケイちゃんは警察が助けてくれるからみんなはとにかく一刻も早くここから逃げてってえもう外したの宝城サトコにとってユージロックの湯は
Hell yeah, let's Rainbow Six Siege this bitch. I shook my head repeatedly. I couldn't do that. Reno was coming after me, so I couldn't head that way. What else could I do? The only way was to go up to the roof of the second floor and get the clock from there. Alright. Ushisan was telling me to go further up. Sadako only told me that it was on the rooftop of the second floor, and she didn't tell me where exactly. She only said it was in the drain canal. But maybe Ushisan found it with his binoculars. I put my foot on the railing of the, ru of the veranda and ran up to the rooftop. I had never felt so light. I felt like I could lift myself with just two or three fingers. Huh. Yeah, 30 seconds would be plenty of time. I could get there in half that. Over there. Was that it? It was! Ah, <laughs> How many more seconds did I have? Ah, who cares? Whoa! I slid down the roof and grabbed the kitchen timer that was sitting on the drain pipe, which was filled with gasoline. There was a cord with a copper wire attached to it. This was supposed to create sparks and start an explosion. The hands on the clock kept moving, with the second hand trying to reach the minute hand. Seven, six, five, four, three! Whoa! I threw it to the ground. A moment later, I heard the noise of something breaking. Huh. 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 Did I do it? Yeah, hold up. There's still a killer on the loose here. Not only policemen, but the children who were on their way to the ambulances raised their voices in cheer. トツニュハン全員の即時退却を進言しています。事件発火装置はもうないのに発火装置がなくても危険度は最大級の現場だそうです。これ以上はトツニュハン全員の生命に危険があります。くそ。屋上の前原君をどうしよう。2階屋根
The band-aids peeled off and her throat started to bleed. Game set, Lena. We were confronting each other on the rooftop of the second floor. This wasn't a club activity, but a real battle. Rena was glaring at me with hatred at first. But maybe because she had already given up, she started smiling wickedly. I heard the chorus of the Higurashi in the background, as if to cool us down from the heat of battle. I didn't think we needed their service yet, though. そうだね。すごろくだったらここはゴールで。ケイチ君の上がりだね。でも、これはゲームじゃない。だからここはゴールじゃなくて、行き止まりって言うんだよ。ち、負けを認めない奴だな。レナはつくづく強い奴だよ